So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this event, which is supported by UNESCO and Empire Code Loves Back on supporting skills for women innovators. Today, we are going to be focusing on the sector engineering and technology. This regional training will enable students, underserved women or women in grassroots to participate in innovations, develop creative industry, contribute to local and national economic development, and nurture technopreneurship and business incubators. The project is part of the wider effort in implementing the 2030 Agenda and its SDGs, especially on goal 4, 5, 9, and 17 today. Now, my name is Jasmine Tang. I am uh, the head of software development and Empire Code Launchpad. Empire Code Launchpad is a software development part company as part of the Empire Code group of companies. I am giving this webinar today as part of engineering as I have a degree in aeronautical and aerospace engineering from the University of Glasgow in the UK. I have exposure to programming um, in my first job and in data analytics at university. Now, uh, and this webinar is run by Empire Code Last Back, which is the social enterprise arm of Empire Code. Empire Code, the companies include education, uh, software development, as I mentioned, and Last Back, which believes in social enterprise technology for everyone. Now, before I continue, I'd like to gratefully thank UNESCO for supporting this webinar. Uh, let's go to start on the webinar. What we will cover today during this webinar, we're going to talk about the introduction to SDGs, why should we care, our focus goals for the day, women in innovation, our focus sector for today, which is engineering and technology, industry innovation trends, education, let's interact, additional reading that we'll share with you, additional free training that I'm going to share with you at the end of this webinar. We'll have a Q&A session and a survey for you to fill out to be able to obtain your certificate of attendance. So let's start to the introduction of SDGs. Now there are 17 goals to transform our world. The sustainable development goals are a call for action by all countries, poor, rich, and middle income to promote prosperity while protecting the planet. They recognize that ending poverty must go hand in hand with strategies that build economic growth and address a range of social needs, including education, health, social protection, and job opportunities. While tackling climate change and environmental protection, most important than ever, the goals provide a critical framework for COVID-19 recovery. Now, why sustainable development goals matter? They unlock and empower human, economic, and societal changes. More people around the world are living better lives compared to just a decade ago. More people have access to better healthcare, decent work and education than ever before. But inequalities and climate change are threatening to undo the gains. Investment in inclusive and sustainable economies can unleash significant opportunities for shared prosperity. And the political, technological and financial solutions are within reach. Now, there are four focus goals for this webinar series. The first one is on education. In 2020, as the COVID-19 pandemic spread across the globe, a majority of countries announced the temporary closure of schools, impacting more than 91% of students worldwide. By April 2020, close to 1.6 billion children and youth were out of school, and nearly 369 million children who rely on school meals needed to look for other sources of daily nutrition. Never before have we so many children been out of school at the same time disrupting learning and unpending lives, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized. The global pandemic has far reaching consequences, consequences than many, that may jeopardize hard won gains made in improving global education. Now, education enables upward socioeconomic mobility and is key to escaping poverty. Over the past decade, major progress was made towards increasing all this access to education, with school enrollment rates at all levels, particularly for girls. You may have heard in the news even in India, there are many cases of girls uh, in underprivileged communities who have been forced into marriage because the parents could not afford to keep them at home as well. Now, this is a global problem as well because about 260 million children were still out of school in 2018. And with what happened in the pandemic with 1.6 billion, we can see the mass effect of what happens in the pandemic too. Now, 
one fifth of the global population in this age group already from 260 million kids. About more than half of our children and adolescents worldwide are not meeting minimum proficiency standards in reading and mathematics. A few definitions to think about here. What is social mobility? That is the movement of individuals, families, households, or other categories of people within or between social strata in a society. It is a change in social status relative to one's current social location within a given society. Proficiency is the fact of having that skill and experience for doing something. So we are here today to increase proficiency for everybody, and in particularly women for this focus webinar. Now, goal five is on gender equality and is achieved when women, men, girls, and boys have equal rights, conditions, and opportunities. And for them to have the power to shape their own lives and contribute to the development of society. There has been progress made over the last decades in empowering women and promoting gender equality. More girls are going to school. There are less girls, uh, despite what's happening in the pandemic, being forced into early marriage. More women are serving in parliament and positions of leadership and laws are being reformed to advance gender equality. Now, empowering women and girls are not, it's not only crucial in accelerating sustainable development, it ends all forms of discrimination against women and girls as being a woman and a girl is a basic human right. It also has a multiplier effect across all other development areas. Now, what is empowerment? Empowerment is the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's lives and claiming one's rights. Now, we are here to empower today women to be innovative. Discrimination is the act of making unjustified distinctions between human beings based on the categories to which they are perceived to belong. And a, an example of this category is gender. So the education focus of this webinar is to enable people to understand what discrimination is and for us to stamp it out as well. The next goal we want to talk about is industries, innovation and infrastructure. Innovation and a technological process and progress are key to finding lasting solutions to both economic and environmental changes, such as increased resource and energy efficiency. Globally, investment in research and development as a proportion of GDP increased from 1.5% to 1.7% in 2015 and has remained almost unchanged in 2017. Now, this is something we do not want at all. It has also always been less than 1% in developing regions. So this webinar's focus is also to increase this R&D in developing regions as well. We need this figure to increase for economic growth. Global manufacturing growth has been steadily declining, even before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic is hitting manufacturing industries hard and causing disruptions in global value chains and the supply of products. The coronavirus pandemic has revealed the urgent need for resilient infrastructure. The ADB, or known as the Asian Development Bank, notes that critical infrastructure in the region remains far from adequate in many countries, despite the rapid economic growth and development the region has experienced over the past decade. The Economic and Social Survey of Asia and the Pacific highlights that making infrastructure resilient to disasters and climate change will require an additional investment of 434 billion per year. This sum may need to be even greater in some sub-regions, such as the Pacific Small Islands developing states. Now, what is an industry? An industry is, a fo is formed by a group of manufacturers or businesses that produce a particular kind of goods and service. Innovation is the action or process of making changes in something established, especially by introducing new methods, ideas, or products. Infrastructure is the physical structures and facilities, for example, your built, your roads, your power supplies needed for the operation of a society or enterprise. Now, there are details on my previous webinar on infrastructure as well. If you'd like to look at the Empire Code YouTube, Empire Code Lastback, or even UNESCO's learning platform. More details can be provided on the chat. Goal 17 is the partnership for the goals. All the SDGs that we have talked about cannot be realized without strong global partnerships and cooperation. A successful development agenda requires inclusive partnerships at the global, regional, national, and local levels. 
built upon principles and values and upon a shared vision and shared goals, placing people and the planet at the center. We are more powerful together. Now, women in innovation. I'm going to kickstart this webinar talking about some women in, in innovation and UNESCO's commitment to women in innovation as well. Over the next five years, UNESCO will increase access for girls and women to digital skills and competencies, STI and STEM education opportunities, including engineering, computer science, and informatics to ensure gender equality in emerging STI fields, such as nanotechnologies and engineering for the SDGs and artificial intelligence. This webinar is also part of the whole series in increasing the digital skills for girls and women and in encouraging them in innovation. UNESCO will also provide access to STEM education to at least 2,000 girls per year in Africa through hands-on microscience. UNESCO will enable at least 2,000 women physicists per year globally under a program, Physics Without Borders, to take leadership roles amongst relevant university research programs. UNESCO will advance the scientific careers of young women scientists and give visibility to their scientific work in all related fields of technology and innovation through its partnership with L'Oreal UNESCO Women in Science Program and the Organization for Women Scientists in Developing Countries. UNESCO will support member states to review the national STEM education systems from a gender perspective, develop, monitor, and evaluate gender transformative STI policies and systems, particularly in Africa. UNESCO will support member states to close the gender, digital gender divide, promote universal digital literacy and ethical use of AI that is free of gender bias and stereotypes through the implementation of the global recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence. In total, UNESCO will invest 24 million US dollars. Now I'm gonna introduce you a women in innovation. This is NASA's Dr. Ellen Okwa. She is here to inspire everyone today before we kickstart. More on this webinar. We do a disservice to society as a whole if we are not providing the same kinds of encouragement to women to contribute as we do to men. So to me, it's all about understanding, you know, that inherently women and men are of equal worth, have equal amounts to contribute, and we absolutely need to make sure that we are getting those contributions from women. I'm Ellen Ochoa, an inventor, a NASA astronaut, and director of Johnson Space Center. People often ask me, you know, if I decided I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a little girl, and I say, well, of course I was following the Apollo program. I mean, I think everybody in the country was following the Apollo program, and I was 11 when uh, they landed on the moon for the first time. Listen, uh, here. Listen, uh, Nobody was going to ask a girl at that time, hey, do you want to grow up and become an astronaut? Because women weren't astronauts and really weren't allowed to be astronauts. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Off it is a really exciting ride, um, and uh, you're at once you're trying to sort of experience the ride, but you're also paying attention to what's going on because you have to be ready at any second. The year before I went on this mission, I had been named to a presidential commission on the celebration of women in American history. <laughs> So one of the things I thought of as, as I was going through this commission, knowing that I was going to be heading into space and that there were three women on the flight was to get one of these flags from the National Women's Party that was used in the early part of the 20th century as women were fighting for the right to vote. So I was able to, to get a flag and to bring it with me into space and then to be able to unfurl it in the new uh, International Space Station, which uh, was so significant because of the part that it played in getting women the right to vote. Getting a patent wasn't something I'd ever thought about when I first went to graduate school or even, you know, probably most of the way through my research, but we got to a point where um, I think my main thesis advisor, uh, Professor Goodman, suggested that we talk to our you know, patent and technology office uh, at Stanford. 
I certainly never thought of myself as an inventor and I, I didn't go to graduate school to, to become an inventor or to, to get a patent. It really kind of came up as part of the process. I mean, there's so many different ways that invention and innovation are, are used in our society today, but it, it is a way that people can contribute um, from all walks of life. I never really thought about being a mentor to others till I was well into my career. And yet I see college students who are wonderful mentors to high school students. I see high school students who are wonderful mentors to middle school students. I wish I had thought a little bit more about that when I was those ages, but you don't have to wait, you know, till you're older to really make an impact on other people's lives. I know myself how important it is to to see somebody else doing that, that maybe you have something in common with or can relate to in some way. It was certainly an inspiration for me when the first six women were selected for the astronaut program and Sally Wright in particular, because she was a physics major like me and because she went to Stanford, which is where I went for graduate school. And that helped me picture myself as an astronaut, which really seemed you know, like such an impossible dream. So I know how powerful that can be. And if there's anything that I can do to help students, you know, just dream bigger dreams, have bigger goals, um, think about doing more than maybe they would have otherwise, then that's just hugely rewarding to me. You know, I think about how I draw inspiration for the women who came before me and how meaningful that is to me. And to think that I might have that role in, in other women's lives. I think it's just another gift that I've gotten from NASA uh, with what I've been able to do there. And now let's begin on our focus sector for today. I hope Dr. Ellen has inspired all of us. In engineering and technology, engineering involves the application of scientific, theoretic, and economic knowledge to research, invent, design, and build structures, devices, and systems, making for a broad discipline that encompasses specialized fields of engineering. Technology involves placing science or knowledge into practical use to solve problems or event useful solutions. But how can one be innovative in this sector? Now, before I start this webinar, despite my engineering degree, I'd like to share that to be an engineer, you do not need an engineering degree. All of us have engineer mindsets in us. It's how we're going to use it. So today, let's talk about some innovators in engineering. Elon Musk, Chief Engineer, Chief Executive Officer and Engineer, best known for PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and The Boring Company. Elon Musk does not have an engineering degree. He has a physics degree, which is also very important for space. James Dyson, British inventor, inventor, industrial designer, farmer, and entrepreneur, best known for innovating the vacuum cleaner. Now, James Dyson doesn't have an engineering degree either. In fact, he has an arts degree. But James Dyson has always been very interested in looking at things and opening things up. Lynn Conway, American computer scientist, electrical engineer, innovator, and transgender activist, best known for improving the performance of modern computers. Now, apart from this tree, Lynn Conway does have a computer science engineering background. But let's talk about a little bit more about each of them. For Elon Musk, the US government and some of its major, major aerospace contractors have had tried to tackle the problem of reusable rockets and spacecraft for several decades. Even after spending hundreds of billions of dollars on these technologies in development and flight costs, neither the government nor its traditional aerospace contractors have mastered the art of flying vehicles to space, recovering them and turning them around for new missions quickly and at a low cost. I'm not sure if anybody here has watched the Hollywood film Interstellar. If you watch Interstellar, Matthew McConaughey stars in it. Uh, you see them taking off and landing in these rockets. And they're taking off and landing in the same rockets. Now, this is what SpaceX is trying to do. With the Falcon 9 rocket, SpaceX carried forward the concept of vertically launching and landing a rocket. He made 
all this possible, Elon Musk. The Falcon 9 rocket is partially reusable and the firm is currently developing the Starship, designed as a fully reusable ship capable of sending humans to Mars. The next one is James Dyson. The Hoover vacuum was invented in like 1908, but Dyson came up with an idea in the 1970s to build a vacuum without the need for replacement bags. Now, when he first started, no manufacturer or distributor in the UK would handle his product as it would have disturbed the valuable market for replacement dust bags. Now, I don't know if you know, but there are many industries that rely on replacements for revenue. Another example is the Gillette shaver and how all its shaving cartridges are replaceable so that people will keep buying the shaving cartridges. So Dyson had the exact same problem with the vacuum. Dyson's breakthrough in the UK market came more than 10 years after the initial idea. Through a TV advertising campaign in which it was emphasized that unlike most of its rivals, the Dyson vacuum did not require the continuing purchase of replacement bags. Never give up on an idea is what I have to say here. The second thing also with Dyson was they figured out a way of making the suction of the dust come into a transparent cylinder. And people enjoyed looking at the dust collecting in the transparent cylinder because they would see, oh, my house is so clean. I've cleared up all this dust. Very innovative indeed. Now with Lynn Conway, you've likely never heard of her. She's 82 years old and she's a computer, a computer scientist and her discoveries powers your smartphones and computers. Lynn Conway's research led to successful startups in Silicon Valley. She supported national defense and powered the internet. Her invention of dimensionless scalable design rules greatly simplified chip design and design tools. She also invented a new form of internet-based infrastructure for rapid prototyping and short-run fabrication of large numbers of chip designs. Prior to this, Lynn had worked at IBM, where she generalized dynamic instruction handling, a key advance used in out-of-door order execution, used by most modern computer processors to improve performance. In 2020, IBM apologized for firing Lynn for her being transgender. Lynn was born a boy. 52, this was 52 years later that they had apologized. Well, nevertheless, they did. So here we have three very exciting innovators in engineering. Now the job options in engineering are vast. You can be an aerospace engineer, agriculture engineer, you can be an automotive, biomedical, chemical, civil, computer, data, drafting and design, electrical, environmental, and geological. You can also be in marine, mechanical, petroleum, and software. There's lots more to engineering than you could ever imagine. And in technology, you can be an accessibility specialist, an agile software developer, an AI engineer, a business intelligence ed analyst, a cloud administrator, a computer hardware engineer. You can also be a computer systems analyst, a data analyst, an ethical hacker, ethical I might add, a front-end developer, which means you're working on websites and what people can see on websites and apps. You can be a full-stack developer, an IT security specialist, a mobile application developer, an SEO consultant, a statistician, user experience design, user interface design, and a video game developer. The opportunities are endless in this sector. Now in biggest innovate, industry innovation trends, I'm gonna be focusing on six today. The first is AI, the second is big data, the third is blockchain, fourth is cloud computing, five is the internet of things, also known as IoT, and the sixth is ro robotic process automation, also known as RPA.